Did Hyundai build one of the best SUVs? This is a 2025 Hyundai Santa Fe Calligraphy in Takara over gray and gray. We're going to touch bases on pros and cons and the competition mixed in with the main question of who is going to be the best SUV in class. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides and it's a controversial question because a lot of people are going to start off saying, well, this has a dual wet clutch automatic transmission and it's not known for reliability and all types of negativity. But then when you put into category what you're getting, it blows almost everybody out of the ballpark. The big problem that I have with this vehicle right off the top is that they did increase the price around five grand last year, which gives you Palisade money, but you're not gonna get the amenities that you're getting here. Starting with seven inches of clearance, 8.3 inches for the XRT, as well as increasing towing from 3,500 pounds to 4,500 pounds, which is, better than everybody in its class because this is comparable to two different slots. For Toyota, you're talking about the RAV4, but this is a third row vehicle. So now you have to go into the Highlander. So when you're thinking it's only 500 pounds less in towing capabilities, this is going to have more overall as a package in value. Going against Honda, it's the same thing. The CRV, it's a two row variant. It's not gonna be able to have the same competition as this. Now you gotta go into the Pilot in which Yet again, both of those vehicles are over 50 grand. This one is around $48,000. With standard LED headlights and daytime runnings, it's a H design that integrates into the top part of the grill with the light bar. Flat badging started last year. The gloss black is going to be on the calligraphy, as well as the XRT is gonna have its own unique front fascia. The satin silver is going to be on the limited trim, and that's going to have an active grill shutter on all trims with the lower getting that mesh inserts, and yet again having the H come into the lower bumper. Front and rear parking sensors, because it's a calligraphy, the limited trim also has that, as well as a 360 degree reverse camera. So go back into Toyota and Honda in the trims that this fits in, because it's only a few inches more in length than the CRV or the RAV4. You're not gonna be able to get a 360 degree reverse camera. Underneath the hood is gonna pack a turbo charge. None of those vehicles are gonna have the performance that you get here. And that's a 2.5 liter GDI turbocharged four cylinder producing 277 horsepower with 311 pound feet of torque, which when you go back to the Honda Pilot, this beats it with torque. Go back to the Highlander, it beats it with horsepower and torque, and you're still achieving 20 MPGs for the city, 29 MPGs for the highway. This is a front wheel drive configuration. Plus, you can option a hybrid variant which gets even more MPGs, which will drop that eight speed wet dual clutch automatic transmission that people are concerned about. So whether you tick the box for this or the hybrid trim, both vehicles are going to outperform everybody in class. And when you go calligraphy, 21 inch wheels, this is unique to the calligraphy trim, 20 inch goes onto the limited, 18 inch is going to be on the XRT that will have a unique wheel design as well as 18 inch wheel standard. When you go into the gas variant non-hybrid, you get a spare tire that's gonna be tucked underneath. The gloss black is going to be around the fenders, the lower rockers, and around all the window seals with 220 pounds you can fit on top of the these roof rails. Now, yet again, going back to competition, think about the CRV, think about the RAV4. The capabilities here are going to outperform it yet again. Plus, when you go XRT or calligraphy, you have this area here that you can open up on both sides. Now, this is locked. You have to use your spare key, open up the door, put it in here to unlock it, which only makes sense because younger kids that know that you can climb here are gonna think it's monkey bars in which they're gonna be playing with your calligraphy and something that's near 50 grand. I don't really want kids doing that. So it's nice that they get that option to lock them. H-styled LED taillights, standard on all trims, flat badging, is as well as the Hyundai badging in the matte black. We have a digital rear view mirror and the windshield wiper is tucked underneath the lower roof spoiler. So it keeps it classy, just not a huge fan of how the whole trunk opens up, which you'll see in a bit. The lower gets the exhaust that's exposed with the gloss black and the grill pattern. But what do you think about the differences between these variants? I mean, drop a comment of your thoughts, because for me, I mean, this is something that is more specced to something like an Infiniti instead of a Pathfinder, or something like a Lexus instead of a Toyota, Acura instead of Honda. And yet, 
it's at a price for a Hyundai. Standard power lift gate going into 14.6 cubic feet and the whole trunk opens up so it makes it easier to load everything. And even on the access, because it stands up a little bit, but you still have clearance to just kind of throw everything in. Underneath the floor gets a little bit of storage. And the reason why is because we've got a spare tire tucked underneath. I have the left seat in the most reclined position and to split fold the third row at a 50-50 split fold these levers. It's gonna increase the cargo to 40.5 cubic feet of storage. The refresh, that increased us 4.1 cubic feet more than the prior gen. Push these two buttons here to fold down those captain seats. They're gonna fold electronically. That's going to max cargo to 79.6 cubic feet, which is nearly 80, 80 cubic feet. And that's an increase of 7.5 cubic feet over the prior gen. Napa leather trim seats, 14-way power seat adjustment for the driver, eight-way power seat adjustment for the passenger, heated ventilated seats start on the limited trim. The calligraphy adds a cool feature, which is called relax. So push and hold this for a second and check this thing out. Now it only does it on the driver's seat, but if you're stopped at a rest area and everybody's reclined, you can sit pretty comfortable. Memory for the driver. And this is what I mean by relaxing at a rest area. Check out the position that I'm in. Not only is it comfortable, but for a long journey, throw the ventilated seats, keep the climate control because we're in the heat of Florida. It's gonna take care of you. Headroom, not an issue, nor is leg space. The calligraphy is going to get all the bells and whistles. So 12 speakers through Bose that actually starts on the limited trim, heads up display, auto dimming rear view mirror, plus a digital rear view mirror, gloss black around all of your buttons here. And the two moon roof setup starts on the limited trim with a UVC storage box, which is up here. That starts on the limited trim. You just push that, it'll kill germs. You have another storage tier here with the glove box and a full pass through with a 12 volt dual climate control settings with a touch pad is standard. Wireless charging pad starts on the SEL, the two wireless charging pad only on the calligraphy trim. One panel, two screen layout, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio, physical buttons for the infotainment screen as well as your audio sound system. You have a little sub menu here that you can close off equipped with Hyundai Pay, put it into reverse, 360 degree reverse camera full trajectory for the front and the rear that starts on the limited tier. Click here and you'll have the 3D view, which when you're considering this type of vehicle and who it goes after, this is pretty high tech stuff. Because if you were to go up into a Honda Pilot, you're not going to have this large of a screen layout. And if you go into the CRV, you're not gonna have a 360 degree reverse camera. Driving mode select, which you can just toggle through here. You have a few driving modes. The only con that I find with all of the Hondas is you have to go into the setup here, which you can also click here for a quick tab. And then you have to change your screen layout for the gauge cluster. 4.2 is standard and you can go through an array of information or content for the driver with a multi-function steering wheel, paddle shifts, and you have the two-tone for the steering wheel. It's also heated with the heads-up display. It's gonna be a little bit more sporty. It opens up from the front and the back. You can pull the tub out and it's a deep storage pocket that goes almost to the cup holders. Ambient lighting will be found throughout the interior of the cabin. Dashboard and door panel configuring together and it gives that Defender look. It's gonna be a little bit more sporty, but it's still soft to touch. One touch up and down for all the windows with a medium sized storage pocket and the front windows are all acoustic. And one nice thing to point out when you use your indicators, we have the blind spot view monitoring, which starts on the limited tier and it shows you everything here. So you not only have blind spot there, but you have it taken care of so you don't have to take your eyes off the road. For the second row, headroom is absolutely no issue, nor is leg space with storage behind both of the front seats, USB ports as well with clothing hangers. This can open up from this side, so you could pull anything from the front out from the back. So it makes it easy, especially if you are traveling far distance or you just have kids that are picky. Plus you have another little storage bin right here, and this is a full open pass-through 
These fold out and adjust so it can be a little bit more comfortable. And you have four-way power seat adjustment. So you can recline these back, which I'm not gonna fit back there, but I can relax sitting here. And it also adjusts the height of the bottom of the seat. So it makes it a little bit more comfortable as well as moving it about here. So that way I can fit. Sunshades start on the limited trim. Air vents on the side with the H design. And I like the style that we're going here because you got that wood inlays, the satin aluminum, heated seats, two cup holders in the top with another on the bottom and it's soft to touch everywhere. For third row access, push the button. It's going to adjust and it should slide forward. It's not sliding forward. So if it doesn't just push it and that's the room that you have with both of the seats in the forward position. I'm at six foot three. It does have a wide opening just here becomes a little bit compromised, fit two more occupants. The XRT adds this home plug. The USB ports on both sides start on the limited trim. Cup holders, air vents is standard. This is going to be on the calligraphy and to adjust the fan speed in the back seats. Headroom, sliding this back, push the button. It's gonna electronically compress against my knees because I'm tall. Actually, I have a little bit of room, but it's going to make it a little bit tight for the second row occupants, or you're gonna lose cargo if you have to use the third row. Now I know on the exterior and even on the interior, what the hell is that? That the car was catching on fire with as many complaints as people talk about on YouTube. Take two. Now, with all the positives that I've talked about throughout the vehicle, there is gonna be some cons as well spread throughout the drive portion. But to really stress why this is or could be the best SUV in class is because it's in two different classes. 277 horsepower, 311 pound-feet of torque, turbo, turbo charge, it's standard. Standard seven inches of clearance. I mean, typically when you get clearance that is right at seven to eight inches, you're at a mid-size level SUV. And this is kind of a little underneath that, but kind of slotted in that, which makes it more unique. You have cargo capacity. It's a smooth drive with 21 inch wheels. The interior, you have Napa premium leather. I mean, it's under 50 grand, five year warranty, 60,000 miles. You don't get that with either Toyota or Honda. You literally have to go into luxury and then you're not getting five years. You're getting four years. And you're also getting 10 year, 100,000 on the powertrain. So when people were complaining about it, I mean, there's a lot of power underneath. You saw how the tires just shifted just by mashing the gas a little bit with the front wheel drive configuration, but it's ticking a lot of boxes. It's hard to find negativity when they gave so much at a value that's under 49 grand. Sound deadening is good. Acoustic front windows and side windows. Now on the cons, you do have to go to your base in order to get the features in the vehicle. And basically it's pushing you into a palisade, but it's gonna be more of a base palisade. You're not gonna get features because then you have to go to near 60 grand in which it puts you in a different category of vehicle as well. But even in the palisade, they give you a lot of bang for your buck. Now we're gonna stop here to show you some of that performance. Here we go. Now it's not a sports car. This is an everyday comfortable with luxury amenities type of vehicle. So don't be taking corners going crazy because dynamically speaking, that's not what this vehicle is meant for. You can go a little bit faster than I'm going, but much more than this, you're gonna start hearing the tire screech. Keeping that Defender style, but literally almost half of a Defender price if you're considering something specced up. Now going into some cons about the vehicle, they do not offer the massage seat for the driver. You do have to go into the Palisade in which you're at Palisade money. I get it. You're not at the calligraphy spec to get that because that's going to be about 10 grand more than this, but I'm sure you could work a deal. And if you're thinking about a base Palisade, the towing capabilities is going to be better. The back or third row seat is going to be a lot more room because in some cases you have to move the second row up in order for the third row occupants to have room. Also, cargo is going to lack because this is not as big as the Palisade. 
you're losing a little bit of ground clearance because that's at eight inches and this year they have a calligraphy night which i've done a review on it's an awesome vehicle it's under 60 grand a ton of features i even thought about trading my infinity qx60 for it which i have an autograph i paid nearly 70 grand for it i actually paid more because i put the wheels and i did the calipers and i did the tinting i did a few upgrades to the vehicle in which i could go palisade and get so much more value that's why I like Hyundai. They just give you such a bargain deal, plus you're getting better warranty than luxury vehicles. I dislike that you don't have a third climate control. When you're at this price and you're trying to spec something out more so than the competition, it would be nice that they just threw that in, especially for 2025. I understand for 24 because we've got a full refresh giving us a turbocharge, giving us all these updated amenities, but just give us a third climate control because you have to go up to the calligraphy in, to, in order to get the his and her wireless charging pad, which I feel like that should also be offered on the limited trim because you get almost everything there, making the XRT and the limited the sweet spot for this vehicle. for a vehicle that's under 50k that has this much luxury amenities i mean what do you think drop something in the comments because i'm just mind boggled that you get so much value adaptive cruise control lane keep assist blind spot monitoring blind spot view frontal collision pedestrian detection rear cross traffic alert i mean the darn car can pretty much do everything for you in which you would be spending around 10 to twenty thousand dollars to get some of these same features on a luxury vehicle and you're lacking with the warranty that's why like i keep asking the question did they make the best suv now in the comments i'm sure people are going to say well the quality of it you know it's a hyundai and that dual wet clutch automatic transmission they've been using it for quite a while so yeah they've had some issues with it and i don't really like that they pair it with an everyday suv because this is more derived for a sport vehicle or a sport suv in which you're not getting that sportness out of it can you unlock some of that feel to the drive you can on a straight shot i mean if i mash on the gas The performance is good, the pickup is there, but it's not going to be something like a Hellcat. It's not meant to be that. It's meant to be an everyday smooth driving, almost to a luxury level vehicle, which puts it into a category where, why would you even consider Genesis when you're getting so much value here? But let me know your thoughts in the comments, and if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like, and I'd like to thank Hyundai of Newport Ritchie for giving us this 2025 Hyundai Santa Fe Calligraphy for our review.